Well, it is 100 years since the original novel of Anne of Green Gables uh, has been published, published 1908. It never ceases to amaze me how people all around the world, either through my films or through the books by Ellen Montgomery, continue to fall in love with Anne Shirley. I was frightened. Maybe you'd change your mind about me staying. I would have to say that the what makes the Anne story so endlessly interpretable is the sense of hope and struggle and strength that she uh, that she pers personifies in the story that we're always all looking for at certain periods in our life. Anne is just such a unique character. The way she looks at the world, the way she uses language, uh, her romanticism, it's all so beautiful and fanciful and it's kind of thing that that young girls, I think, aspire to and admire. She's just a wonderful, wonderful character. She defines the modern woman. She has a mind of her own. She's outspoken. She also has a tender heart. She has an ability to forgive. And she has a wisdom that goes beyond her years. She's also very ambitious and can do what many of the other characters who she's surrounded by are either afraid of doing or incapable of doing. When I went back and actually reread <laughs> Green Gables um, very recently, her, her relationship with the adults in her world are, I think, something that appeals particularly to young women. It's not, you know, that she always gets the better of the adults. She doesn't. It's not that kind of sassy relationship at all. But I think that that's ultimately what is so endearing about it. You mustn't trust everyone all the time. I think people still love Anne because she's so lively, and I think everyone wishes they could have, you know, some of her in them. I may be rumbled in spirit, but not in the head, Mrs. Thomas. I think I'm like Anne because we both do have an imagination, and I can have a temper sometimes. Anne Shirley has a really positive attitude towards life, and always sees the best in people. One thing Anne's had to learn to do, starting at a very young age, is, is survive without a family, on her own. And she's had to learn to really adapt with, with her environment and get along with the people that she is currently living with or living with at the time. And also has changed the lives of the people she's living with um, in, a, in a very positive way. To think that this book was written and then put away in a drawer for a long time because publishers didn't want to have anything to do with it. Thank goodness she brought it out and reread it again, because the characters that she draws, they are so finely drawn and done with wonderful broad strokes. They, they come to life, unlike so many others that, that uh, are in lesser works. These are people that you can know immediately and love. I had no idea that Anne meant so much to so many people um, until I ran into a couple of Canadian friends of mine and they asked what I was doing and I told them and they literally freaked out. They got so excited and I realized that Anne is like the equivalent of the Wizard of Oz to some people. Growing up, I, I never read the Anne of Green Gables, but I've got now a two and a half year old daughter and I've got the visual materials that I can sit down with her as she gets older to show her the stories, and now I can read her the book and have my own chance of reading for the first time Anne of Green Gables. I suppose you're Mr. Matthew Cuthbert. My name is Anne Shirley. Anne spelt with me. I was beginning to be afraid you weren't coming for me today. When I read them in PEI, my daughter at the time was only, I think, 18 months old, and um, and I wasn't working, so I would uh, uh, take her to various areas of, uh, on the island and sit, and while she played, I read the books. I read all of them. When I did the first Anna Green Gables, I knew that the book was well-beloved by many people, but um, I approached it not as someone who loved the book, but more just as an interpreter. I just knew that what I wanted to do was give the audience an impression a very true impression of what the book would have been if they were watching it on screen. But I've always approached the material f through the eyes of Anne as a character and wanting to at least be true to who she is as Montgomery has created her. So in approaching this material as a prequel, 
um, there was very little challenge actually. I just approached it from the point of view of who was Ellen Montgomery? Why did Anne of Green Gables come into existence? What was the catalyst that brought that character into being? And once I'd answered those questions, the whole story just unfolded. I thought it would be an opportunity to dovetail with the centennial of the original publication of the book. But I also felt that the earlier films that I had done could be embellished by a story that could surround the original group of films. And by casting different actors in them, it, it invoked creating a completely different world. So it was an interesting challenge. When audiences finish watching this film, I want them to realize how extraordinary Anne's life has been.